Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my favourite third world country, which is Scotland, and more specifically, John O'Groves. Now, recently in a video, you saw me drive from Scotland, Ben Nevis to be specific, to London and the Shard on one tank of fuel in my V12 BMW 7 Series. Many of you wanted to know if that video was at all influenced by Top Gear and Jeremy Clarkson's escapade many moons ago where he drove an Audi diesel to Scotland and back on one tank of fuel. To which it wasn't really because we were setting out to do entirely different things. However, what I'm about to attempt in today's video is partly influenced by Top Gear and a challenge that they did in 2011. February to be specific, on the shortest day of the year, Jeremy Clarkson drove from the westerly most point of the UK, which is Land's End, to Ness Point over in the Far East on the shortest night of the year. And the idea was to arrive at Ness Point before the sun rose. That was in a challenge that was deemed as the race against God. Now, if that was the race against God, then what I'm about to attempt is the race against God's dad. Now, you might have guessed it, I'm at John O'Groats, so John O'Groats to Land's End, right? Well, yes. However, it's not just going to be a simple jaunt across the entire length of the country because today, as I'm standing here, is June the 20th. In just a few hours, midnight will pass and it will be June 21st, which is the summer solstice and the longest day of the year. This presents a fairly rare opportunity where theoretically, and the hope is, I'll be able to sit here in a few hours at 4.02 in the morning to be precise, I'm dreading that, and enjoy the sunrise somewhere over there as it comes up over here at John O'Groats, but then immediately drive to Land's End in time to enjoy the sunset. The total daylight time between John O'Groats and Land's End tomorrow is about 17 hours and 30 minutes, and I've got 838 miles to travel to get between the two points. And there lies the challenge. Will I be able to make it to Land's End in time? And that's why behind me is this L405 autobiography because ultimately this challenge is actually a test of endurance and there's probably no better car to do it in. And that's exactly what I want to prove in this video. More about the car tomorrow as we go though. It's actually half past eight now, so I'm gonna enjoy a little bit more of this beautiful, beautiful weather. It's uh, unbelievable, actually. Really, really stunning here at John O'Groats. Then get to bed as soon as I can, and then I'll be up again at three in the morning to come back down here, watch the sunrise, and then land's end. Morning. hours to drive. Oh my god. It's 4.02. I'm just switching all the cameras on. But, okay, I think we're all good. That's it. Let's go. I'm not nervous, I'm just, I don't know. I guess it hasn't hit me what we're about to do. This will be, this will be the longest drive I've ever done in, in sort of one sitting. Right, so it's 4.03 now. 4.02 was the official time that the sun rose 
at John O'Groats, which is where we just were. And that is the sort of time that the, the first slither of the sun pops up above the horizon, which obviously we couldn't see because there was clouds on the horizon, but we're going off that time. And so we're now on the way. We've got 839 miles to travel. Waze is estimating 13 hours and 35 minutes currently without stops. Although having said that, Waze does um, adjust its ETA based on your previous driving. So it knows me quite well. However, if I was to plug that into Google Maps, it's more like 14 and a half, 15 hours. So it really only leaves with, with perfect conditions and, and no look at that view. Perfect conditions and, and no traffic, about two hours of leeway. And I, I don't think I'm gonna have to obviously stop for comfort breaks, but I think at some point I'm gonna have to try and sleep and fit in a, uh, a snooze. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I, I don't think I am because I just think I cannot stay awake and, and drive for that long, but if there's any car that's going to allow me to do it, it's this. So our route today then, uh, obviously we're at John O'Groats, the top sort of north easterly point of the mainland of the UK, and we're going straight down southwest to Land's End. So our route will take us down the northeast coast of Scotland here, down to Wick, eventually cut in, I think, to Inverness, past Inverness, through the Cairngorms National Park, uh, somewhere then in between Glasgow and Edinburgh before we leave Scotland via Carlisle, and I think we'll go down as far as uh, Manchester, Birmingham, and then we take the M5, split off there, and we take the M5 for the West Country. I think we'll go down the border of Wales, somewhere past Bristol, and then across Dartmoor, Southwest direct to uh, Penzance and then Land's End. So that's something like the route we're doing. It's a Monday and people are going back to work and unfortunately, I don't know actually, but I think we're probably gonna hit Glasgow, Edinburgh area around 8, 8.30 a.m. around rush hour. So potentially there's a chance there we get stuck, but I don't know. All I do know is that while we're on these big open roads right now, pretty much all the way to Inverness, it's four in the morning, it's perfect conditions, but really beautiful. And uh, the roads are, are dead quiet. So I'm gonna try and make up some time here and actually, I think, small mode in the transmission, flicks the paddles. Try and make some progress. <laughs> the latest generation. This is actually a 2015 model. So it's actually six years old. However, it is the same shape as the latest model. It's an autobiography, which means this thing is kitted out to the max. And again, perfect for this trip for that reason. Obviously over the past few days, I've had to drive myself up here. We've actually done, I think probably close to, if not, 826 miles we've done since I picked this car up, and funnily enough, we've got 828 miles to carry uh, to cover right now. But on those miles, I can safely say this is the most comfortable car I've ever driven, uh, mainly thanks to these seats. I mean, they are just so, so soft. My 7 Series is really comfortable, but this is a step up from that. But just the way this car rides the road is just effortless. And doesn't matter if you're going fast or slow, it's actually a great place to be. This is the 4.4 turbo diesel V8, and although I think maybe I would have liked to have a 5 litre supercharged um, version, actually having the TD V8 means we're probably going to have to stop one less time for fuel. I think we'll only need to make one stop for probably half a tank, actually, depending on how exactly I drive. Whereas if I was in the big supercharged one, I think we'd have to have made at least two. So in that sense, this is the better car for the job. And tell you what, it's not at all lacking for power, this. It's 
crazy. It's got about 570 pounds feet of torque, if not more than that, I can't remember the exact figure. And it is like super quick, this car. I mean, there's no way, other way about it. I mean, it's, it's a quick car. This would be my Z4, my Z4, it'd be all my cars in a straight line. Absolutely stunning, stunning morning it is. We've been on the road 40 minutes now. We've covered 33 miles currently. I've got the sun rising behind me now, which is, I wish you could be here. There's not really any way to quantify it in words, how beautiful it is. Sun rising behind me, just the color of everything in front is stunning. Off my right, we've got some serious mountains. Just the clouds nestling over the top of them. And I'm sitting here in supreme comfort. So it's moments like this, which are the reason we do these trips. Memories that they create. But anyway, it's too early to be getting all soppy because we're only 41 minutes in now and we've still got 795 miles to travel. But I just have to appreciate how special this is. I mean, it is really, I mean, how lucky am I? The road's completely empty. The weather's beautiful. I'm in this incredible car. Wow. Anyway, back into sport mode. Use the panels here. Fifth gear. Let's get a move on. My feelings of euphoria quite quickly turned into feelings of concern. I've had a restricted performance error come up on the car with a red triangle and we are basically in limp mode now. I put my foot down, nothing happens. It will go up to 45 miles an hour under its own steam, but that's it. At the moment, we've got a lot of downhill, so we're managing to keep the speed limit, which is 60. But obviously this is not good. I don't know if it's something that's fixable on the road. Uh, I've got a few ideas, so I'm gonna give them a go. I'm just sort of making the most of the speed that we've got on these downhills. But once that evaporates, I'm gonna pull over. See right now I've got my foot down. You can see the red triangle. And we're going uphill at the moment. And I'm not sure, hopefully it makes it. Oh no. I guess this is good, it's happened here where the speed limit's 60 because we're managing to maintain almost that. Because on the motorway, that's where I'm gonna lose time if this doesn't get sorted. And I don't know if it's something I should continue to drive the car on. So, only an hour in and a big, big blow. A big, big blow. Right, I thought if I'm gonna pull in, I might as well pull in somewhere pretty. Oh, I didn't realise we're gonna... I'm going down to see Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Bloody hell. Diagnostics complete. Engine. Ah, oh, here we go. Manifold, absolute pressure. ECU. Right, let's clear it. Hopefully that'll do it. Come on. <gasps> yes! Oh my god. Flipping heck. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Okay, well, the car seems to be working fine. I'm just going to pop it on cruise control because we're behind this guy anyway. So we'll let the car just follow him for a minute so that I'm not pushing it. And to celebrate, I'm going to have myself some grapes. This car also has a fridge like my 7 Series, however, the fridge in this one is in the front, so it's actually somewhere that's useful for me. I always rave about the fridge in the 7 Series, but the truth of the matter is, I never get to use it, because I'm always up here. Hmm. 
So I left at 4.02, so we've been going almost three hours. We've covered about 170 miles, uh, actually I'm close to 180. So we have averaged around 60 miles an hour so far, which is obviously very, very good, especially given that we had that little stop as well. I'm starting to feel really, really tired. Um, just, yeah, struggling to keep my sort of eyes open. However, the scenery around here is absolutely beautiful. We're in average speed check zones, which, although I absolutely despise, well, this isn't a bad place to be stuck in one. I've got the car on cruise control, I'm leaning back, I've got my massage seat on, and there's honestly not many other places I'd rather be right now. This is blissful. So, in terms of going forward then, we are currently in between Inverness and Edinburgh. The estimated time of arrival is now 5 p.m. exactly, which means since I left John O'Groats, that's gone down about an hour. So in three hours, I've shaved off an hour, which is very good. But essentially all this is doing is, is banking time because I will need to stop and I guess the more time I have banked the less risky it is to stop because of course I could stop for one hour which right now on paper wouldn't be a problem at all but then there's a crash on the M5 and I'm stuck for three hours and I fail the challenge but yeah I mean bloody hell I look at this this view is absolutely stunning absolutely stunning and there's not you know you have to travel a long way I joke about Scotland all the time obviously saying it's a third world country and stuff it is a joke I think Scotland is incredible and what I was going to say is you you have to travel a long long way to find anywhere as, as beautiful and diverse as this I can smell something funny I don't think so. Okay, maybe that smell is my car. I just uh, booted the car to see if anything happened, as in kicked out, floored it, and big, big cloud, or sort of a constant puff of whitish grey smoke came out the back. So much so that the people behind me had to move out because the visibility was bad. So, that was about two minutes ago. I'm pulling in to some services here to just check that everything is in one piece, first and foremost. Oh, God, is that smoke coming off my car? Yeah, there is smoke coming off the car, I think. Temperatures look good on here. Okay. Yeah, I can smell fuel as well. Okay, we need to get this in here and switch it off really quick. Really, really rich smell of fuel. Really, really rich smell. Yeah, look at that. Something's not happy. Are we out of coolant? Uh, I don't know. It, it is typical as well because honestly, the car has been completely seamless um, for the first, you know, how long? I've been driving about three days, maybe about 800 miles before I started filming anything for this video. The car has been seamless and it is now today, the day that I actually do the challenge, that it starts playing up. Okay, bad news. Something is leaking big time under the car. And I don't think it's air conditioning, let's put it that way. I can't tell what that is. It's cold. Maybe, oh, I'm so confused. Right, so whilst I think about what to do next, I've just jumped in the back, I've closed the pan panoramic blind, 
It's made it a bit dark in here, it's quite nice. Um, I'm gonna pop those blinds right down as well. There we go. Um, yeah, so something is definitely leaking from the car. I don't know what. I'm wondering if it's diesel that's leaking, in which case I cannot drive if it is. So I'm gonna just have a little lie down now. Just weighing up whether I should be sitting in here if it is fuel leaking. I'm gonna have a lie down now for a bit and then wake up and think about what to do. Probably the next job is to call the garage, uh, to call Richmond Land Rover Specialists and, and see what they say. Yeah, God, what an up and down this the journey has been already, and we're not, you know, not even halfway. Or it might turn out we are actually at the finish point now. Uh, okay. Hello. Um, it is half ten. I can't remember what time it was that I pulled over, but I've been woken up by people who I'm in this huge car park. They could have stopped absolutely anywhere, and they stopped right next to me, and they're having a conversation. So I'm awake now, but I've actually slept, which is really strange. Now we've got the issue of if I'm actually in a stricken car or not. I guess I'm going to try and just start it up and see what happens. Anxiously setting off from that services then because yeah I'm still not sure about the car. Um, I'm going to watch the. I suspected it might be fuel that's leaking, so I'm going to watch that range and that fuel tank and see if it's going down abnormally fast. Okay, I'm putting it again because there is something pouring out the back of this car. I really don't know what it is. Something's cooking under there. Okay. Something is not right with the car. I just had a look underneath and there's sort of it's pouring smoke out. It smells really rich. Uh, and it's leaking various places, so it's not good. The problem is, I'm really I'm not in a good spot here at all. I'm not safe in the slightest. There is a welcome break six minutes away, three miles. Uh, I think I'm going to try and limp it over there because it's not particularly safe to sit here. So let's just try and. It's strange because clearly there's something not right. But I don't have any warning lights on the dash. It's, uh, so this fuel gauge about five minutes ago was on half a tank. You can, I can vis you can visually see it going down, so that's got to be our problem. Um, yeah, that's bad, isn't it? That's really bad. We need to... Oh, God. Okay, so I've spoken to Paul from Richmond Land Rover Specialist, and he uh, has been very helpful. Just said, take it to a garage. So I've found a guy five minutes away who I've just spoke to who says he can have a quick look. So hopefully at the very least we can find out what's going on and we'll know then if this is something that is fixable or not. So right, I'm gonna put the camera down now, go over there and uh, yeah, let's see. Hopefully this is gonna be my rescuer.
mechanic here has very kindly just had a quick look. He reckons it is a fuel leak. I think I knew deep down it was because the smell is so obvious. I just wasn't, you know, I've never had that before. So looks like it's a fuel leak. You can see just from the literally two minutes I've been here, the massive puddle it's created there. Um, and so they've got a couple of cars in having MOTs at the moment. And once one of those is done, they're going to get it up on the ramp and have a look for me. So as you can see, cars uh, on the ramp behind me, they just had it up all the way, had a look underneath, and now they are uh, looking in the engine bay. They've been in there about 10 minutes or so. It's one of those things where it's either a, a good thing that they're taking a long time because it means they've found what the problem is and it's fixable, or it's a bad thing because they can't find the issue. It inherently means it's something a lot more complicated. Anyway, I'm just pleased that uh, I'm safe, the car's well, safe for now and on, on a ramp getting looked at by um, these guys, McDonald Motors. So shout out to them for literally seeing me at about two minutes notice. Fingers crossed, it's fixable. If it is fixable in the next hour, we're still in with a chance of getting to Land's End. But I'll be honest with you, right now, that's the least of my worries. For reference, we're in a place called Abington. So you've still got absolutely stunning Scottish scenery next to me here. We are still in Scotland just. I think we're about halfway now between Glasgow and Carlisle. So not too far from the border actually, but look, this is where the car was parked a second ago. And you can see it's not just leaking in one place, it's leaking all over. And it's made some nice marks on the road here as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is not how I expected today to go, but you know, <laughs> what can you do? Uh. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, this is different, isn't it? Hello everyone and welcome to uh, a hotel in New Lanark is where we are, uh, still in Scotland, somewhere between Glasgow and Carlisle. Um, yeah, it all went wrong, didn't it? It all went wrong. So basically what's happened with the Range Rover is it's got a bad leaking fuel injector, which was causing the fuel to leak, as we know, and also now a pretty horrific coolant leak as well. So uh, the first place I took it, they couldn't do much about it and they couldn't, you know, it's not really their thing. Um, so I got those guys to recover the car to a uh, Land Rover specialist that Richmond Land Rover specialist found. And so we recovered it there. He's got the car now. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if it's a fairly simple coolant thing, uh, it can get fixed tomorrow. It'll probably be late tomorrow, but it'll be fixed nonetheless. So, needless to say, the John O'Groats Land's End challenge is a write-off. And I guess ultimately what I've set out to prove in that the Range Rover is the ultimate car for long-distance journeys, well, it isn't, is it? Because it doesn't work. Um, look, very unfortunate. Obviously, it could have happened to any car I was driving, obviously. But it is just super unfortunate this happened today. Um, because honestly the car has been flawless or seamless um, the past few days I've been doing about I've done about a thousand miles in it and it's been great so my race against God's dad has failed however I guess I'm going to uh, just relax for a bit here at this hotel I'm in the middle of nowhere so I've got no other choice to be honest and um, well I guess I'll, uh, I'll speak to you guys when there's more to speak about I'm hoping tomorrow this time tomorrow we'll be going to pick up the Range Rover. But something tells me that's quite unlikely.
are back in business. Uh, only one day, I mean, about 24 hours after it all kicked off yesterday, a bit longer than that. I am so relieved that the car is fixed and uh, I'm really relieved for um, the guys at Richmond Land Rover as well, whose car it is, that it was something fairly uh, minor. It turned out it wasn't a fuel injector, it was the diesel pipe, coolant hose, and a connection to the coolant that had gone. Um, so actually, it was a hundred pounds of labor, but the parts were less than 200 quid. So genuinely not an awful thing. It was like a 300 quid or so fix. So it's half past five now. And so I've decided I'll stay the other night at the hotel tonight. And then tomorrow uh, we'll set off in the morning for Land's End. Anyway, still early days. Because if you think about it, we've only covered about 300 miles of the 800 mile journey. So it's <laughs> still early days. Anyway, look, I'm gonna get back to the hotel now, relax, uh, take, a, take a breather, and I guess I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the road trip. We can finally resume what we set out to do. So the truth of the matter is, the other day, we didn't actually get all that far. I think from John O'Groats it was something like 838 miles if I remember correctly and we've still got 544 to cover so actually we only covered not even 300 miles of an 840 mile journey so yeah we've still got a good old way to go today anyway it's uh, 11 o'clock I've left quite late had a lion which is very nice actually and a uh, great hotel I think I'll be coming back here um, deliberately in the future when I'm traveling up to Scotland but yeah so at the moment um, it's 544 miles eight hours of, of driving to do and so actually we've only got about two hours of leeway because our estimated time of arrival right now is 10 past 7 and sunset will be around half past nine it won't have changed much if at all really from the 21st the solstice so it is actually still going to be quite a long day. Also, I don't have a hotel booked for tonight, so it looks like I'm going to be driving home to London after I've done filming at Land's End, which will be a further five hours. <laughs> and obviously what I did discover the other day before it all went wrong is that I can comfortably sleep in the back of this thing. It's quite remarkable. I really need to try that out on my L322 now, because if I could actually sleep in that comfortably, Maybe I should take that on a road trip around the country and <clears throat> only use the car as accommodation. Who knows? I think I'm going to have some PTSD after this trip and maybe we'll just give it a little bit of a breather before I embark on something else a little bit daring. Anyway, thanks to the uh, leaky nature of Monday, I do need to get some fuel. We've actually only got just under a quarter of a tank, actually. we Honestly, I think we lost about a quarter of a tank from the leak the other day which was slightly irritating, isn't it? But just goes to show that it was quite a severe leak. Um, so I need to pull over, get some fuel, get myself some fuel. I need some coffee, actually. I didn't have any breakfast today because I slept in. And also fix whatever that is in the back that's sliding around because it's doing my head in. Cool, right guys, check in with you in a bit. This is gonna be a pretty expensive filler uh, because the fuel here is £1.50. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in England, they hike the prices up massively at these sort of motorway service stations. So, yeah, I reckon this is gonna be, well, it'll definitely be over 100 quid. It might be about 120 pounds, I think this. Top tip, by the way, and it's especially useful when you have cars like this with massive fuel tanks. Um, it works on most things. Stick the petrol fuel cap in between the handle on the fuel nozzle and it will just do it without you doing anything. Yeah, actually that is terrifying, isn't it? That is going to be expensive. This will probably be the most expensive. Oh, there it is. Done. 
20 quid. That's uh, a pretty good guess. I feel confident in the car now. It's been driving absolutely fine. There's no reason anything else will uh, go wrong. I really hope it doesn't. What's quite funny as well is if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting sort of the antics that's been going on with this trip uh, as it happened. So you will have seen, but lots of people have been saying, well, surely this is really bad promo for Land Rover, but also for Richmond Land Rover specialists. To which, actually, <laughs> It's great promo. It basically just demonstrates to, to you that they're quite intelligent for getting into the business of fixing Land Rovers because they do go wrong and go wrong quite often. It just uh, reinforces the need for them in, in the market. So, and as it turned out, it was something fairly minor and probably due to just higher stress than usual or you know, it's something that's gone wrong on all of my BMWs is coolant and, well, not fuel leaks, but oil and coolant leaks have gone wrong in every single car I've ever had. So I think more so it's just unfortunate it's happened during this trip. Well, the eagle-eyed Wongs amongst you will have probably noticed that this is not Land's End. I decided against going all the way to Land's End because I felt like ultimately what I'd set out to prove and to achieve on this video failed because the car broke down and obviously I was unable to complete the challenge of driving from John O'Groats to Land's End on the same day, which is a real, real shame but it hasn't really taken anything away from the trip for me. I've had the most wonderful past week in Scotland. I've been pinching myself every single step of the way. The fact that I'm in someone else's L405 autobiography covering 2000 miles in, I have, I have been pinching myself and it's absolutely wonderful. And what I have proven, and I believe to myself, I was right in, although wasn't able to show it on the video, is that this is ultimately the best companion to a long trip. It is the most comfortable car I've ever had the pleasure of using for a good amount of time. I've not got no backache. I've still not tried all the toys in the car. There's still stuff I'm finding now, even then I'm giving it back tomorrow. And from the cooled and massaged seats to the radar cruise control, stuff which is on lots of cars, don't get me wrong. It's just such a wonderful package. It really is. And yes, although, like I say, it didn't work out being able to do it all in one day. I did still cover the same sort of mileage and right now I'm still very much enjoying this sunset just the same. It is stunning and what a companion to have for it. But look, I must say a huge thank you to Richmond Land Rover Specialists, not only for supplying the car, but just for being so good to me. But in the meanwhile, they have got my L322 and as you will be seeing more of, they're gonna be fixing that up and basically just restoring it to be almost new, at least mechanically. And so, although I've really enjoyed this L405 and all of its creature comforts, there is something about the rustic nature of my older L322 that I'm longing for and missing. And I think I associate that sort of thing with Land Rover. And this is missing that a little bit just because it is so luxurious. I also miss that naturally aspirated purr of my petrol V8 in the Range Rover too. But anyway, although I'll be sad to be giving this back tomorrow to Richmond Land Rover Specialists, I will be, well, very happy to see them that the car is back now in one piece, but also really, really excited to get the keys back to my L322. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It has been a absolute nightmare to make. It's cost me a ton of money and it's not sponsored. So if you could support the video by giving this video a thumbs up, I would be much, much indebted to you and very, very appreciative. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're not already because we will be doing more of this and hopefully successfully going forward. But look, it's one of those things, I couldn't have planned this trip anymore, I couldn't have done it much differently and it still would have been the same outcome. It's just one of those things. And actually, it could have happened to any car that I use, so I wouldn't say it looked too badly on the Land Rover brand as a result. Nonetheless, I'll leave it there, guys. Until next time, I will see you very, very soon.